Go. Streaming from South Africa to the world. To the world. This is the Stonks Go Moon podcast. What just happened? We break it down so you don't have to. Welcome everyone to the Stonks Go Moon podcast. My guest today, best-selling author of the book, The Tower of Trading, returning guest, friend of the show, Simon Ree. Simon, how are you? I'm really well, Rocco. How are you? I'm absolutely stoked to have you back. Simon, awesome do, you, back. do you think people still watch soap operas do you think even the young generation would know what a maybe in like a novella like a mexican novella and the reason i'm asking is to me what's playing out now with the fed is like it's like dallas this is like days of the days of our lives this is like yeah um days of the fed and you you can't <laughs> you can't fed, make it up it. you absolutely <laughs> can't make it up um Let's pick up where we left off last time, talking about inflation and rates. Yeah. And what have you seen since the last time we spoke? Well, I think last time we spoke, we talked about whether whether or not inflation was transitory. And we, we kind of thought, yeah, I mean, the, the Fed have got a case to make. Well, they had a case to make early on because you could argue inflation was being impacted by very low base effects that we saw during a big deflationary shock, which was the COVID crash. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the last time we spoke, we, I think we said uh, the whole transitory argument is really starting to fail because uh, those base effects are rolling off and inflation seems to be accelerating not decelerating yes and we've certainly seen a continuation of that trend so as everybody knows inflation last week cpi printed at 6.2 percent that's the highest reading since 1991 three decades ago scary not only that uh, we've got now six consecutive months of the cpi printing above five percent oh so nothing to worry about there well that's only happened five other times (laughs) Uh, in the post-war period, and barring one event, it's it's gone. It's happened for at least thirteen months. All right. Jeez. Now the, the one outlier was in 1991, but you, you might be too young to remember yeah. this. But the, the the world was actually going through a pretty nasty recession at the time, and yes. kind of the recession is is really what kind of killed inflation there. Uh, well, and the I don't like that. It's easing. a second. Sorry, it's the second time someone I'm had on the show brings up that all word recession, and I. I hate it. I had I spoke to Aisha Tariq and she well basically her point was if we are going to see an inverted yield curve on let's say the 10-year bond, then 12 to 18 months um we're gonna have a recession. Do you share those views or do you have different views? Well, this is what the bond market is telling us, right? We've got, sure. we got 10-year yields at 1.62 percent. Um the bond market is just shrugging its shoulders at inflation at the moment, which which yeah. means one of two things. Either the bond market is convinced the Fed has got this, all right, and the Fed is going to really increase restrictive policy in the short term to, to crush inflation, mm. which is not something the Fed's communicated, or no. we're headed for we're headed for a, another deflationary shock. If you think about a ten-year bond yield, it's, it's approximately a function of uh, real interest rates and economic growth, mm-hmm. all right. So one point six percent rate isn't isn't particularly bullish on either. Mm. So, yeah, I, I certainly have some sympathy with that view. So two things, right? It's for me, and this is purely anecdotal. This is just looking at charts, looking at price action. Everything long-term still looks really bullish, right? If you take this yearly candle as a breakout candle, subsequent candles will retrace. I mean, maybe like, let's say, 30% or 35%, whatever. But long-term, we are still really bullish, my feeling is that the market is very doing a very good job at hiding what is exactly going on. We talked about it offline as like, oh, look, it's the emperor's new clothes. Everyone, it's like yeah. everyone can see, but no one says anything. But this has been going on since 2009, That's hasn't it, really? I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of Fed policy is, is really hidden uh, a sea of kind of, you know, underlying problems. Yes. Let's put it. Economic growth has been moribund for nearly all of the past 14 years. You know, we've, we've, we've been at well below what, what you call, previously called trend growth. Yes. Uh, but the stock market has just been on fire. And, and yeah. 
you know, now, right now, more so than ever. And I think that's where the danger for a short-term trader comes in is listening to that narrative and being caught up in that narrative in the Fed and story on the soap opera and just looking at the charts because even I'm going, I'm getting uncomfortable because I can see it's extended to the upside by quite a lot. It doesn't mean it's going to come back, right? I mean, the, the market is decoupled from what's really going on. So it's it's that noise, but that noise, you said it the other day, it's becoming so loud. And it's even like people that pride ourselves on being able to block out the noise. I find myself that I can't. That's why I completely stepped away for a bit. Right. Uh, I, look, <laughs> I, I, think it's a, I think it's a wonderful time to be a trader. I mean, yeah. when you look at things like, uh, forward PE ratios, look at cyclically adjusted PE, you look at uh, market cap to GDP. I, I think it's a horrible time to be a long-term investor right now. Yeah. I mean, really, what, what are you pinning your hopes on for the next 10 years? Uh, I think it's a great time to be a trader and just, just being able to have, you know, that nimble mindset to be able to go from long to short, you know, in a couple of mouse clicks. Yes. Uh, I think that these are really, really powerful advantages that, um, you know, small retail traders have. Yeah. Let's talk about stocks. And one of the biggest one being obviously, well, I would say biggest, but it's it's become a divisive stock, right? In Tesla. I mean. Well, Tesla, it's it's the number five stock in the S&P 500. Yeah. It's, it's and bigger it's than worth, Facebook. It's yeah, bigger it's than worth Bertrand more Hathaway. than all the, co- well, Rivian is now sort of there. We, we, that's debatable. But I mean, mm. it's if you add up all the other car manufacturers, it's bigger than everyone combined. <clears throat> My point is, there was this Twitter games that Elon is playing, right? So the first one was a poll, should I sell stock? Yes, no. It turns out it was premeditated. Those calls were made before he put the poll out. Now, he absolutely... Oh, his brother lo- had already sold stock. Well, but, well insider yeah. trading isn't insider trading anymore. It's just trading, right? Because if I know... Yeah. The, I mean, let's not go into the SEC and the power that they... I don't think they have the power to to do the investigation we're moving at such a rapid pace it's just like one thing after another that it kind of falls behind the wayside but so bernie basically bernie sanders said he put out a tweet and said it's this old narrative high net worth individuals need to pay the tax and elon responded in a tweet that broke twitter oh i forgot you're still alive and everyone went <laughs> it was retweet it was like just like a yeah. rapid fire and he followed it up with you want me to sell more stock bernie just say the word just say the word and i thought man this guy is playing chess on another level we are here on the ground playing 2d chess he's playing three it's not just him he's playing 3d chess with his team where or or whoever is advising him because it's not only one person He's got people around yeah. them that saying, okay, you need to do this, you need to do that, and we're moving the pawn pieces. What is your take on the games that he's playing and the long... No, let's not even talk long-term future, short-term future for Tesla. Well, the, I mean, stock. let's talk about Elon's games. I mean, this is, this is nothing new, all right? Mm. You know, I think that the first scandal I can remember was when he said, uh, yeah, funding was secured. For, for taking yes, it private. stock is too high. It, yes, 420, it whatever. 420, the, the, yeah. the joke was, yeah. And, I mean, he, he got into a bit of hot water over that, right? Because, he, he <laughs> you know, you got the CEO. Don't do it again. You know, Don't do it again. Lying to the market uh, <laughs> on, on social media about price sens- potentially price-sensitive material information. Yeah. But, you know, Elon's troll game on Twitter, I mean, he's he's probably second to none. I, I reckon he's, he's probably even better than Donald Trump. In yeah. terms of his, his to- trolling ability, and of course Donald's been uh, put on ice now. Yes, um, I miss him. I think no, if, not if that way. Right, just yeah. he used <laughs> yeah. to be able to move. Remember those tweets about the trade wars? Bam! Where are the trade wars now? You've got hashtag trade war. Well, two hundred, three hundred points. You could see it like in an instant. Here uh-huh. we go. We had we were on, and now it seems to be um, Elon is playing those games, but he's playing it differently because he will change his name to lord edge and he will <laughs> tweet ship to the moon and yeah. and he quite he knows his audience right it's not the trump audience it's this new generation of audience that he has 
And look, if you're a Twitter shareholder, honestly, you <laughs> probably expect this behavior from your CEO now because that's yes. his form. That's his track record. And if he wasn't doing it, you'd be, you'd be asking him, well, why aren't you doing it, Elon? Come yeah. on. This is yeah. why we're invested with you. Um, so you know, if, if, you, if, you, yeah. if you go into Tesla stock and you're surprised by his performance on Twitter, then you, you really haven't gone in with your eyes open. So where do you go short term with Tesla? Uh, look, I mean, I, I think it's tough. I, um, I saw it, you know, a week ago and I, I kind of made, made the comment that it looked uh, ridiculously overvalued. Yes. Shorting Tesla, though, has just been a, you know, it, Tesla has been a short seller's graveyard. Yeah. So I, I didn't short it because I, you know, I've made a lot of money in Tesla yes. from the long side. It's, it's been one of my kind of best trading stocks over the years. I did have a small short on XLY, yes. uh, the consumer discretionary sector. And Tesla mm -hmm. is obviously a, a big mover in that. That was also looking sim similarly extended. Uh, so I, did, I, I bought some puts on XLY. I'm still holding a, a position there, but looking to take profit on that pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, Tesla... If you look, look at where Tesla was on the lows yesterday, it had, it had, had a 20% fall. It was in a kind of official bear market, um, but it bounced a little. I think it only closed down about 2% by the time the market closed. So, Crazy, right? You know, arguably, it's, it's kind of, you, 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 from a technical perspective, you could argue it's washed off the near-term excess and could yes. be consolidating for the next leg higher. To me, it's trading like a meme stock. And to see 20% and, uh, you know, down 20% or 20% drawdown and then finishing 2%, that is ridiculous. It's, and it's, like the, said, of the, it's the number five stock in the S&P 500 That's and, and it's trading thing. like a penny stock. You know, it really is ridiculous. You talked about some of your positions. Um, what are some of your favorite option plays in a market like we're currently seeing? If you can maybe like, Try and because you need to have some form of idea if you want to get involved. Um, but if uh, on a, on a just a, a simple level, what 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 would what would the uh, what would those setups look like? Well, I mean the setups that I've been really focused on over the last four to six weeks have been earning setups. So okay. what I look for is stocks that um, have a good track record of. Uh, share price appreciation into earnings, the, the stocks that exhibit pre-earnings optimism. Yes. Because what you usually see uh, in that run into earnings is not only, you know, you, you often see the share price rally, but you see IV rally as well. IV yes. really tends to surge yes. into that. So IV is implied so, volatility for those that- Implied not, volatility. Okay, yeah, yeah, but not maybe familiar with the term IV. Okay. So that's, it's one of the setups that I teach in, in Options Academy is, is the yes. explosive earnings setup. And, and that's, you know, I've had some good wins on, on that with, uh, yeah, last week it came out of stocks like uh, CrowdStrike and Palo Alto Networks. And um, I'm currently in, <laughs> don't laugh, I'm currently in GameStop, actually. Uh, <laughs> that, that is a stock. <laughs> we hit it here first. Um, it, it, is a, it is a meme stock. I'm, I'm not in it because it's a meme stock. So I'm, I'm in it is into meme stocks. The next it's, thing. Uh, oh, so next month. So earnings. next month when you're coming back, you're going to tell me you're stacking sats. Not lucky. <laughs> What's stacking? Let's not go that, that, anyway let's not go that far. Let's yeah. not go that far. So I mean, before I let you leave, um, the one you talked about earnings, and I'm just looking at figures here. The one which was surprising to me is Palantir because they basically... I mean, the earnings were good and they took an absolute right beating, like I think 9% down. Any thoughts there? Because, I mean, what does the market want? Well, I mean, we see this every earnings season. You, you'll see stocks that look like they killed earnings and they're down 10, 20%. And then you see other stocks that earnings look pretty meh and they're up yeah. 10 or 20%. And it's, it's all about performance relative to expectations. And it's not even necessarily... The official expectations is that you know it's the whisper number that you know is, is circulating a day or two before the result okay um you know and then occasionally you get a stock like uh, peloton which mm. <laughs> you know, is, is just, <laughs> just genuinely disappoints <laughs> i read an interesting one i said um uh, it was a lady i can't remember her name now she said people just woke up to the fact that they bought an ipad strapped to a white bike and i thought that was yeah. <laughs> that was classic yeah, absolutely. Simon. Um, uh, yeah, I, I never understood that business model. Thank you so much for coming on. If the listeners want to connect with you and uh, buy your book, because they should. 
um and also yeah leave those links or come and and also tell us what you're busy with yeah so um if you want to if you want to sort of learn more about what i do uh towerftrading.com is my website uh if you'd like to buy my book it's the best eight dollars 99 you'll ever spend towerftrading.com forward slash book and um really and truly i i'm looking to run another webinar um first week of december so I'll, I'll advertise that through the usual channels, LinkedIn and, and YouTube and so forth, but uh, really focusing on, uh, you know, I'm going to change the focus of this webinar a little bit, talk a little bit more about entrepreneurship, setting up a business, you know, how trading can potentially be the, the bridge to you. You're doing that. And, yeah, you like know, a, taking you to the next level. Yeah, escaping the, the rat race and becoming your own boss, master of your own destiny. Awesome. Love it. Uh, Simon, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, to our listeners. Pleasure. Peace, love, and prosperity. I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.